Okay, uh, before I start off with getting deeper into earth changes, um, are there any questions about the first half? That we might as well get them out of the way whilst it's fresh. Are there any questions or thoughts about the first part, which is about how the soul comes into the body and how you've heard a couple of uh, instances where clearly under hypnosis, people are aware of why they're coming into the body, to the earth, chosen their parents, and in the second case, even knew that she was gonna be in extremely toxic circumstances, but then told us why that was good for her, for her development of her soul, right? So are there any questions about that observation? Clearly this is exciting because uh, I feel, this is an area that I'm clearly doing a bit of research to, and I'm putting it into the Institute, and you can see that the evidence, and I, I've only played two, uh, I've got dozens of them, um, where we can see that the superconscious state is very aware prior to coming into the fetus of what its mission is, and uh, difficulties and hardships, the relationships and why those hardships and relationships are going to be beneficial, harmful, difficult, etc. In few words, they come in wide awake. And you heard that in the first case, she was able to hear the voice of her grandmother quite clearly. We, we cut it there, but later on she really started to cry because she was able to hear some members of her family that have since passed away, her grandfather in particular, who she loved to. Uh, and so there, what I'm trying to get to is that no matter how harsh our life is, there is a, a choice that you've made, we've, I've made, we've made, not only to be in that body, but on this earth. And I like to point out that uh, the information that I get, because uh, of course I've got clients who take me to other dimensions, other planets, this is certainly not the only uh, school in the universe. But one thing that you can be proud of is that this is a hard one. This is a school of hard knocks. All of us that repeatedly come to the earth, there's a bit of a merit, merit badge about this. We know this is a particularly dense planet, very, very confusing, and very lonely at times. But just as I made the analogy of the roller coaster ride, you are guaranteed to get off. And the way that we laugh about our lives on Earth and how seriously we take our lives when we're on the Earth, when we're back with our soul group, you've got to hear the laughter when I do Life Between Lives and the, and the, uh, the before they come to an earth and say, you don't take it so seriously this time, etc. So, are there any questions about that whole process? Yes, I would like to ask you a question. In what stage does the soul come, goes into the fetus? After how many weeks? Yeah, um, the answer is it varies. Uh, older souls usually come in later, younger souls usually come in earlier. Uh, but I've had uh, some souls that tell me I come in and out. Reason I say, why would you come in and out? Well, it says, I want mum to feel that I'm there, but I'm a busy soul back in the spirit world and I've got things to do. Just sitting inside there for seven months is a little, you know, a little tedious. So, um, so I'll, I, whenever she's awake or whenever she's doing something or she's saying, look at me, I'm pregnant, you know, feel their kick, I'll kick, you know. Uh, but if she's asleep or she's doing something else, then I can get out. So it's very much an optional thing, and again, it's, 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 um, it's, it's, it's clearly something that's more optional to the more experienced soul. All right? The younger souls, when I ask the younger souls, when did you come in? Oh, three months, two months, four months. Why did you come in at that particular time? I was told to. Okay. Uh, do you ever step out? Can you? Um, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, so, so you can, and others say, oh, absolutely, and how do you come into this soul? Do you always come into the body at the same way? No, depending on the mission that I have, I'll come in at different chakras. Okay? So it is variable, and the more learned the soul, the more it's really up to that soul as to when uh, they'll come in. Does that answer that? Yes? Yes? Yeah, they're not that common, but um, it, you know, hypnosis is not an exact science. Um, the funny thing is that it's actually often the more intellectual, intelligent people. Yeah, because they're questioning too much. They're too much. Prove it to me. Yeah. 
No, I can qu I can quiet most mind chatter. Um, that's the whole point of hypnosis. Um, but uh, you know, there's not many I can't put down. But you know, my ego's writing on this. You know, <laughs> they're paying me money for this. I'll hypnotise you. <laughs> Bang! When you hear that, when you feel the shearing pain at the back of your head from the mallet, you'll go into deep hypnosis. Okay, righto. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, I have to admit that sometimes, but the, the more you do this, the, the more you learn tricks as to there's a part of the mind that isn't going. So there are little questions and little things that you can ask the part of the subconscious that doesn't want to be hypnotized about trust. And, uh, you know, you're paying money for this. <laughs> you know, one of, the, one of the things is your personality is paying me for this session. And it would be a real shame if, if money changed hand and you didn't let me at least be, do some benefit. So even if you don't trust me to do some very profound work, would it be all right just to do some exploration or something like that? And I'll keep badgering until I finally get, uh, yeah, that makes sense. So can I go there? Yes, you can go there. And once you're, once you're in there, you start to build rapport and trust and you show that you're professional and caring. And soon, most sooner or later you can get into the deeper work but there's a few that just stay like this all the time does that answer that yes it's negotiation too uh no not with me because uh, it's already been decided all i'm doing is reviewing so no uh, i'll ask them uh, why did you choose that body? And uh, I'll give you a quick example. Uh, one was a, a lady recently who, uh, she, clearly she's living in Australia now, uh, middle class and, and uh, getting quite deeply into spiritual work. Um, what were the other two bodies that you were offered? Can you see them? Yes, I can. One was a female, you know in Morocco and places like that, there's that tribe that dress in blue. The uh, Berbers, the Berbers. Uh, she was a member of the, this body was going to be born into the Berbers and it was going to be born into a good gene pool, a good DNA pool. Uh, and she would become quite old and when she got old, because she's an old soul, she would become an elder woman of that tribe and, and, and use that position to help young women and, and calm things. And she would, you know, old souls are given more responsible positions. Um, when I asked her what was good about that life, why it was offered to you, and she said, well, I would have played an important role. The tribe isn't all that big, but to those young women coming up, my innate knowledge would be very helpful to them. Uh, and uh, also, even though it's not an exciting life, it's fairly monotonous, um, there's also a, a, a being in touch with the earth that I love. And I ch tend to choose a lot of lifetimes where I'm in with the earth and being in a tribe nomadic and still moving around and things like that. There'd still be a lot of that sense of at one moment that she loves. Why did you reject it? She said, I've done those sorts of lives and there's some really exciting times on the earth. I want to be involved and get my hands further into it. What was the other body that you had? She started to laugh. I see a playboy, an English playboy. Uh, good-looking, born to the peerage of some form, and um, quite wealthy, good-looking, and very much a girl's boy. Um, and she see, I see a life of frivolity, drugs, sex, drugs, rock and roll. Not much to, too much depth until later on in my life. And it says, uh, and I said, well, that's quite different from where you are today and the Berber one. Both of them having more meaningful. And I said, why would you be offered such a frivolous lifetime? And she said, oh, my guides have told me that I've done really well over the last three or four lifetimes and I deserve a party life if I want it. <laughs> Isn't that bloody good? Isn't that great to know that we can get a life where you go, says, yeah, go and have fun. <laughs> Your kids go and have fun sort of thing.
I agree. Uh, uh, certainly, I'm told all the time, uh, enjoy your life. Um, you know, when, when you've got to knuckle down, knuckle down. But when you're given time to have fun, don't keep staying at work. You know, it's eight hours of fun, eight hours of work, hours of rest. And the spirit world keeps on reminding us, you've got to get it that you are forever. Now, having said that, whilst I absolutely agree with what Ian just shared, um, there is, uh, as a conclusion to what we're talking about, that guy, the one that chose, did not choose the more frivolous life. Why did you not choose that party life if you deserved it? She said, I'm at a reasonable level of advancement now, and there are opportunities on the earth to live three or four lifetimes in one. Because until 100 years ago, we, if we were born a farmer's daughter, a farmer's son, you were a farmer's daughter and son for your whole life. If you were born a lord, if you were born a, a maid, you more or less did that for your whole lifetime. I reckon most people in this room are, qu are questioning type people, and like me, you've probably done three or four serious professional things in your life. And uh, we've learned from gone to that sort of school and moved away to that religion, read that one, we sat in the thing and said, no, that's not good. And, and you know, we're, we're accomplishing a lot. There's a lot of time for quickening at the moment. And, but we're also reminded to smell the roses that we chose to be on the earth. This is a very, this is not another incarnation. This is a very particular incarnation for what I was alluding to before. So whilst we certainly should look at each other increasingly as brothers and sisters. And we should party, we should dance, we should laugh. We are eternal. And where the earth is going is gonna be much, much more of that. So if at the moment we're all feeling dense and it's, we have to remind ourselves to have fun, after this change is gonna be oozing out of us. We're gonna be celebrating what we've been through. Remember, this is the last incarnation where we have to put up with this shit. Okay, next incarnation, we are much, our bodies are going to be far, far finer if you decide to return to the earth. Any other questions? So does that mean that you can help us find our life's purpose? If, we, if I'm sort of questioning uh, direction, will that help me? What will help you? The hypnosis? Yes. Uh, well, I try. That's the whole purpose of what I'm doing. I can't guarantee anything, but I'd say the majority of the times we get those answers, yes. Be aware, though, that I find that most people who ring me up and start, where I always like to chat to people on the phone. I don't accept everybody. I'm not trying to be elitist, but I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes, um, you know, somebody said, oh, you should see that person. But um, I am very aware that I'm helping your guides. It's not the other way around. My good guides don't help me. They do. But I'm really, if they've been led to, to ring me and pick up my card or come to a talk like this, and if you think what I'm saying is shit, then fine. But if all the, some of it resonates, and you say, I, I think this is possibly true. There may be something I'd like to know. Because the best wisdom is experiential. It's very good to read somebody else's books. But until you've personally experienced it, it's just a theory, isn't it? So from the Bible to, to the stuff that I'm recommending. So that's why I love doing this work, because it's, no, it's not my stuff. I'm, 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 you hear I'm playing and talking about other people's experiences as expressed through me through their vocal cords from their mind. All right? The way I see the superconscious working through the ego is that the superconscious is like um, the dam of water that gets filtered down through various uh, decreasing pipes and comes into your home in a quarter inch pipe or a half inch pipe so that you can make a cup of tea or wash your hands. It's a tiny dribble of water in comparison. But if you go beyond the, the wall through the plumbing, you'll know that that's a network of hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of houses, all interconnected at the same time. And ultimately going back to the source. That's the way I see incarnating on the earth that whilst we're in this body, we keep on seeing ourselves from this side of the tap. But we're about to start to swim further. We're going to be in body, but be able to move into the bigger pipes. And uh, now, did everybody read? Uh, any other questions on that other bit first? Yes. Um, well, sorry, sorry. Um, I guess, uh, 
Oh, the celestial event. The Unity Alliance talks about the celestial event. There's a lot of scientists are saying that there's a black hole that's um, taking up the cloud at the moment and it's going to um, spin out into it straight towards the Earth. And I always have a feeling that we're going to get a wash up like, in the Some of them talk about um, these events causing any massive thing in the Netherlands, but they talk about the whale being used and we're going to do all the same truth. I've always had a phone. I don't know that it's got anything to do with the black hole, but it may. That's the celestial event, celestial event yes. It, did you read, you did not read this? Okay, because you, you'll, you'll see that in that, it actually discusses something very similar to what you've just described. Yes, I've had many, many clients also. Well, now, if there's no more things about the soul and coming into the body. Yes, there is one more. Let's ask, uh, with the soul, going back to what you were saying before, um, is the totality of the soul um, becomes incarnated, or is it a portion? It's a portion. Yeah, thank you. That's why we're able to talk to and, and work with uh, the rest of the soul whilst I've got an whilst I've got my hypnotised client in the chair. Yeah. I can sort. I can get into the superconscious state because it's still plenty of it there. In rare cases, uh, and you read this in the books. Uh, in rare cases, you'll find that. Um, uh, we actually incarnate in two or even three bodies at the same time. This is usually reserved for very old souls uh, because they want to get on with it. There's a greater sense of urgency. Just like when at school you're in grade five or four or three or whatever, you really don't care about the education too much. You, you want to play mostly and the education is almost incidental. But by the time you get to high school, some of us will still not be that interested, but some will start to say, I want to become a mechanic, or I want to become a surgeon, or, and we start to have a direction. Others just keep on going willy-nilly, right? And then by the time we get to higher education, some drop out, some stay in, now we can go back. Same it is with the soul. As the soul gets uh, older, the sense of urge to move towards perfection gets greater and greater for the most. But I've had, for instance, very similar to the lady I was playing before, who's all but a master. I've had another soul who was speaking with such incredible wisdom and depth about not just the earth, but the earth and the, and the history of the earth and telling me how many civilizations there have been and where it's going and why and all these sorts of things. And I asked, are you a master? You've got incredible knowledge. Uh, didn't have any guides and I said well can I speak to who your advisor is and it turned out to be one of her soul group and he is a master he works on the boards and I said I'm getting a little confused by this we'll call her Greta for the sake of the argument Greta says that you are not her guide you're her brother in the spirit world you're a master and she's not and can you explain what's going on here and he said yes she loves the earth and has decided for the time being not to take on the full mastership that she has already earned. She's decided to keep on incarnating on the earth for the time being because that's where she wants to give service. She loves this planet more than I do. I'm serving the planet, but from up here. I don't want to get one in one of those stupid bodies anymore. <laughs> right? But she doesn't mind it. And, uh, and I will I'll work, especially during the transitional time and that sort of stuff. So, yeah. Um, do you find that successive incarnations are linear in time, or is it possible to go backwards, like the incarnated future, then back to the past? In doing past life regression, or are you saying... Uh, well, as a soul incarnation. No, you, it's a linear thing. You can go sideways. It's a little bit like... Um, uh, Another soul was telling me that, uh, okay, I'll give you a, a fantastic example of that. Um, another old soul, not as, not, not as, as quite, but still a very advanced soul, and um, go back into a past life. We went back to the Second World War where he was a young lieutenant and one of his soulmates was a sergeant and they had to lead a, an attack on a town probably in Europe, uh, probably in the latter stages. And he knew it was a dangerous mission, but his orders were his orders. Um, he leads the attack, they enter the town, and within a couple of minutes, a mortar hits both him and the sergeant, and they're blown to bits. 
And the next thing, so normally if they're a young soul, they're in a bit of distress about this. So I'm really close to them. I'll touch them, hold them. It's okay, I'm with you. And remember, this is just a review. Blah. But this guy's starting to laugh. Rather unusual. You know, I says, so did you just say you're out of your body? Yeah. Uh, describe your body to me. It's bits. There's a head over there. There's arms over there. It's so funny. What are you, what are you laughing at? It says, the sergeant's body is far worse than me. He got blown up in the same morning. You've got to see him. He's so angry with me. He said, he's coming over and he's saying, I'm not going to follow you into battle again. Look at my bloody body. At least you know it's got a torso. And it was laughing in the most ridiculous, funny way. But again, it underlines how we see the body and coming to the earth when we're free of the body. We really don't take it so seriously as we move along. We realize that this is a classroom down here, and just like students at school, sometimes we take it too seriously. Sometimes we, we look back on our student days and think, I wish I'd played and kissed a few more girls and taken a few more serious lessons, or whatever it is. I should have enjoyed school a little more rather than always wanting to get out, right? And then he was said, oh, look at that. And then all of a sudden he became very serious. And he said, I know, uh, I know what my life mission is. He said, I was supposed to be in this attack. There's a lot of men dying in this attack. And he started to almost push me aside. Like I was asking questions like, yeah, 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 but let me do this. And he and the sergeant said, uh, realized that a lot of his men were dying. And many of the soldiers, the privates, were young souls. And both of them were old souls and they needed to be here in this large battle. So being uh, still appearing as uh, an officer, he was able to say, boys, come over here, it's okay, it's okay. And he said, oh my God, look at that. And he said, what are you looking at? There's one soul sitting in his dead body, sitting in it, trying to get it to move. And I said, it must be a young soul, a very young soul. And he said, get his attention, and bring him over. And it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. At the end of that day's battle, there were hundreds of souls discarnated. And he took them up, he and the sergeant and a couple of others, took them up so that none of them remained earthbound. Took them up and all their, all their loved ones came and got them and took them away. And when he's finally done all that, he said, all right, now we can get on with it. <laughs> it's his session. So, okay, so who meets and greets you? And he says, I don't have a guide. I am an old soul. Why are you still incarnating? Because I love this earth. Very similar to the other one. And I was tapped on the shoulder and I said, there's going to be a big war on the earth. Will you go down? We'll put you into a life which will be very easy for the first half. You'll be born into a... a You'll be born into a, a wealthy family, you'll have lots of love, all the rest of it, but you'll need to die young, we'll need to have you... Uh, and do you accept all that? Yes, I'm glad to have been of service. Did you learn anything from that life? No, it's not much for me to learn, really. It's, my, it's, it's giving. As you become an older soul, you have more of an in, increased uh, input to, to give. It's in giving that you receive. Right? Okay, so... Can you, can you just tell everyone uh, what you do as a therapy? You know, why, why would somebody want to come and see you for any particular reason? Well, I have no idea why anybody comes see you. Okay. Um, people that come and see me are typically... Uh, even though I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, I really don't do a lot of the smoking and the normal thing that, that most of my colleagues do. I'm a specialist in uh, transpersonal work. I was told when I was 13 what my mission on the earth was, and that mission is, and as it was told to me at that time, that uh, the earth was going to go through a big change in my lifetime, that I'm here to service and to work for, towards that change, that for the first half of my life, have fun. But the second half of your life is going to be different. And um, you will find that people will be drawn to you. Um, and we will bring them to you. Some will be feeling in a sense of panic that they've missed the boat of this transitional period. And you're just to talk, work, you know, reassure that you can't miss the boat. You're, you've, if you're supposed to be on the boat, you're on the boat. Even if you're waking up fairly late, Yes, you might have to do a little bit of extra homework, but it's almost, I, I, you really can't miss it altogether in the sense of all the legwork has been done in previous lives. This is the graduation class. So um, I do a lot of that reassuring because, of course, sometimes the egos in some of my clients, often the oldest souls are the humblest of people. When they first get to, to, to realise how old their soul is, 
they really, that can't be me, I'm just a housewife or I'm just this or the other. But they, as the sessions go on, you can see that they start to transform. I'm not sure I'm going to have time to play this, but there is actually an instance of that I brought for you tonight, where you see a very ordinary housewife living in the Dandenongs, um, and she transforms when she goes into the death sequence, she goes back to the light, and instead of going to a healing, or in, she's taken immediately to a classroom, and she thinks she's one of the students. And this is very unusual. Usually they have a healing or a review or to their soul group. And she went instead to um, this school. And at first she's like, oh, I'm with kids and I, I must be one of them. But bit by bit as she gets into that, life, into that experience, more she starts to be, I'm the teacher. Could it be that I'm the, t I'm the teacher? And then she transforms. She becomes the authoritative teacher. And what was the subject? She's a teacher of how to use intuition. Okay? She started, I, don't, I haven't got it here because later on, because I cut it, but she actually starts to give me a little lesson on how to use intuition. <laughs> Real teacher thing. So for her and those sorts of clients that innately feel that there's a change happening in me, or at least I'd like there to be a change happening in me, or are these questions that are arising in my mind, am I alone or is there a collective? Yes, we are a collective, right? A lot of people that are worried, uh, talking about earth changes, are concentrating and focusing on what the future will be. And the messages that I get is that um, we really shouldn't worry about that too much. Really, that's uh, intellectual stuff. What we should be working on now is uh, in the thing, the aura thing, starting to work with expanding your sense of being in the now, now. Okay, and that will help us do this flip. If you read that letter, you'll see that this client in a super conscious state expresses an, a, a thing on the earth which is very, very different, but ideally. I've had other clients tell me that the population of the earth in a couple of hundred years will be down to half a million people, perhaps less. Most of the souls that leave at that time will be going to other planets, other circumstances, at an earlier stage like earth, earth was earlier that the earth is going to have far fewer of us, but we're going to be resonating in finer bodies and we'll be able to intercommunicate with people in the spirit world, we'll live long lives, uh, and we'll have a real sense of true community. There will be, everybody will know that's my brother, that's my sister. If you don't have food, I won't walk past anymore. My empathy is, you are me, I am you. You haven't got food? Here, I've got some as opposed to what we see right now. Um, and so it's a very important stage. What I'm being told is don't worry too much about the futures, although I've got some stuff here and in that thing expressing some of that future. But what I'm told to tell you is, and myself, is that your guides are working with you at night and the best thing we can do right now is talk to them. Remember the guides work better with our permission. We are always given sacrosanct freedom of choice. So it's very wise for us to say to our guides in our sleep patterns, please take me to uh, healing centres of learning and things like that over this period of time. You only have to ask once and you'll be gone. You may not remember it, but you'll do that training during your, your night patterns. That's why sometimes you might wake up in the morning feeling a little dazed or discombobulated because we're, they're, we're, they're taking us to frequencies and energies that are much higher than our body. In the auric, auric exercise I do here, I really suggest you do this uh, every day if possible. Uh, this is something that's been told me to give out, and that is that um, if you can experience, start to go into a little bit of a self-meditation and, and begin to try and imagine what your aura feels like around you. And of course, like anything, the first time we ride a bike, the first time we swim, if it's, you try it two or three times and, and you don't feel anything, you say, oh, I can't do it. No, don't give up. It's like anything, you know, no one learns to swim in three lessons. It takes a, lot, a while, okay? Same with this experience. The more preparation we do now in being quietly alone and being in the now will facilitate and feeling the, the aura and going out and then starting to walk around in your house, being aware of your aura. Um, and then later on even going outside and feeling an animal pass you, and you'll start to recognise that you're actually awakening your spiritual or your soul state of awareness, which is your higher mind.
Okay, does that make some sort of sense? And that's, that's really going to help this transitional period. Um, now, Ian was asking about progressive uh, 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 sessions. Now, obviously, I couldn't have given you that uh, thing, or there's a, an audio uh, later on that I'll play for those who want it, because I realise it'll go a bit long. So those that need to go home. But I'll play uh, an audio where he describes the Earth uh, in 50 years' time. Uh, in one side, it's negative, but on another side, it describes exactly what we're talking about. Those that still remain are in a, a, such a heightened state of at one that even in bleak circumstances, they feel completely at peace and blissed out. Um, so uh, for us now, uh, progression, um, we, we can't get that information if some of our clients don't automatically go into uh, progression. Of course, we all know about past life regression, we'll be talking about it. But there's also another aspect of the work that I do which frankly, uh, if Ian didn't ask me, I really wouldn't talk about it. We're, we're told really not to talk about it, but seeing he's asked. Now, I offer this and I say with a proviso that dealing from Brian Wise to Michael Newton to everybody who I've ever discussed this with of what I would consider my, consider my elders on the earth, they've always said to me, Nino, of course, you'll have a few clients that can do this, but generally don't talk about it, don't work with it unless the client automatically or spontaneously goes into a future life. Because you're really opening up a can of worms that's not for most. But seeing Ian has opened and he said, look, you wouldn't be here if you weren't interested. I'll go into that subject a little bit, okay? Then if you're really interested, give me a call and we'll talk. But I prefer to talk one-on-one -on, -one on these sorts of things, okay? The reason why we generally don't like to go into progressive things unless the client spontaneously goes there is, as I said before, I know very, very well that, the, that I'm working with the guides, I'm helping them, not the other way around. And the worst thing that I can do to my client is confuse their intellect. And going and trying to manifest what something is going to be in the future, unless you already know what you want and therefore you're manifesting it yourself. But if you're trying to anticipate what the future is, it's a mind game. It's an intellectual game, which is actually defeating living in the now. Or can. It's a danger to. Because you're starting to say, I know that it's going to be like this, or I know it's going to be like that. It sounds like ego to me. What's better to know is just to say, I just am. And I'm going to be forever. Whether I'm going to be a part of of that transition and therefore I'm going to find the food that I need or I, I'm not supposed to because I've chosen a body and all my guides have chosen something that I'll come to a cessation, so be it. That's the way it's going to be. You're guaranteed to get off the roller coaster ride and get back on if you want or go to another ride. So progression is where, of course, we take a client and inevitably it's after we've done quite a few normal past life regressions and sometimes even after a life between life. Normally by the time I've done a life between life with session, I more or less finish uh, the work with that client. But some are exceptional, such as the lady that wrote this for us. And such as the guy, uh, Ophir, who was a captain in the, I won't mention anything else, but uh, he was a captain in the um, Israeli army. And he had some near-death experiences and decided that he didn't want to be a part of the terrible things that his superiors were asking him to do uh, on behalf of Israel, and he literally ran away. He now lives in New Zealand and came and did some sessions there. And again, typically, a really dreadful youth, a really terrible, terrible youth, uh, badly concussed by his brother who is slightly insane and has a slow mind, but under hypnosis, the intelligence and the quickness of his mind is incredible, it's chalk and cheese. And he flipped very easily between past and future. And it happened automatically with him. Now, as I said, later on, I will play. It's a 30-minute thing. It's quite lengthy. I don't know how many people are interested. If you're interested in it, stay after we've taken uh, the last little bit and listen to it if you, if you like. And this is an example of a progressive session that happened uh, spontaneously. But on the whole, I would say... Uh, I will pass on, like I said before, generally 
it's not wise for us to try and know exactly what's happening in the future simply because I'm constantly told your present brain cannot conceive of the extra dimensions that you're going to be living in, therefore you're actually confusing yourself. And this is not good for being in the now. Right? So therefore I go back to um, the aura exercise that I've mentioned here or something like that, if you've got any other exercise, I'm not saying that's the only one, but if you haven't got any exercise at all, then that's one that's a very good one to apply, and then uh, you know, Vipassana and various other things where we learn to really be aware that I, there's nothing static in me. There's no central, the brain is just is a faucet. The mind is far, far greater. There's no limit to our minds, guys. At the ultimate level of our mind, we are the I am. Right? And that's one of the wonderful things that I get from the sessions that I do, that as I tempt the older souls to go deeper and deeper and deeper, yeah, I, I, we go into dimensions and places and spaces that are so far beyond this earth that coming back and worrying about what's going to happen tomorrow is so laughable, it's ridiculous. We just are. And we are going to be forever. And soon we're going to be joyously here on this earth forever. Well, as long as we want to be here. Okay, so... Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Um, I can't think. I've got so many instances that I could I could cite to you of of, of cases uh, about this. Um, let me give you one. Uh, this is in New York. I'd given a talk in New York, uh, and it was just a talk. I wasn't doing any sessions there. I was only there for a couple of weeks. Um, and, uh, but I was asked uh, at the Alex White, you know the, the post you've got out in your waiting room, Alex White? At his studio. Mm -hmm. And I saw the originals of all. They're huge, aren't they? They're as big as a whole wall. And I gave a little talk at the end of somebody else, and some, and at the post, like cocktails afterwards, I was sitting there, and some guy taps me on the shoulder, and I turn around, and I see a guy dressed in white, only about 26, 28, and he was so pure. In New York, you know, I turned around, and I went, whoa, those eyes are so beautiful, they were like a doe. It's just, whoa. And I, and I was almost hypnotized, he was just love, he was gorgeous. He's all there, and he's holding a didgeridoo. Of <laughs> all in New York, a didgeridoo. And uh, and I said, "What can I do for you?" And he said, "I really enjoyed what you talked about, and I felt I should come and do a session with you. I think you can help me." And I said, "I'm sorry, I'm not doing sessions." And I got a click behind the back of the head from my guy. Do him. And I said, "Oh, uh, I've got nowhere to do." And so, and then the friend I was living with, "That's all right. I'm at work tomorrow. You can do them in the lounge room." So I said, all right, um, I'll do a session with you tomorrow. You know, it just happened like that. And he said, I can't pay you. And <laughs> this is where I knew, knew straight away he was a hybrid. He, he said, I don't have any money. I can play my ditch for you. <laughs> That's bartering, you know. You do, you do a, this, this, uh, this session that normally be four or $500, and I'll play the ditch. And I just love the pure barter of it. I just loved that it was so honestly offered. And I said, don't worry, I'm quite happy to do this free of charge. Um, you know, I'll be honoured. So next day he comes along, he goes into hypnosis in a second. His, his reason for coming was he suffered from diarrhoea. Very bad. Anytime he got a little emotional, he got the runs badly. And for such a good looking boy, that must have been a disaster. Um, so I go into where it came from and boom, I'm on another planet. And uh, straight away, his super conscious was very authoritative, very in command. Uh, and he describes the planet to me that is, uh, he said, it's, it's not known by the Earth scientists today. It's, it's a long way away and nowhere near as beautiful. Everyone that ever talks about other dimensions and planets, including some incredible crystal planets and things like that, always say, but the Earth, she's the gem. We're lucky to be on the Earth. The Earth is uh, a planet of, of great beauty, great diversity. There was a lot of work put into this planet so that we would have a joyful and wonderful place. And uh, anyway, 
he describes that the planet is fairly dour, dour, I don't know how you say that word, uh, but it has a couple of suns, it's fairly hot, but their bodies are used to it, and they have bodies that are not dissimilar to armadillos, very flat, they have a protective coat, hard-bodied coat over them that protects them from the worst of the sun, and they live underneath their bodies like a shell. And because the density of the planet is so great, uh, gravity is very great, they don't move around much. So he said, so sounds boring. He says, uh, well, of course, we have telepathy, which you don't have here. So we have great mind games and communications in our mind. It's, it's more fun than what you think you're having here. You know, uh, uh, and because there's no misunderstandings, there's never a misunderstanding. There's great empathy and love. And I said, well, that sounds really good. Uh, did you eat anything? He says, yes, there's a, there's a fungus that we eat. <laughs> a fungus? <laughs> he says, it's delicious. <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm sure that if I go there, I'll, I'll learn to love it. But uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll stay with my, my apples. I like apples and oranges and peaches. I really like peaches. Anyway, he described this planet in, in the fairly thing. And then I asked him, well, you sound like you love that planet. Why have you come, into, come to the Earth? I want you to go to the discussion where you decided to change ships, change schools. And he says, yes, I see it. Okay, what's being discussed? Well, one of, two of my senior guides are talking with me that given where I want to go with my soul, the expertise that I want to move, I'm an advanced soul now, and, and I want to get in some fairly advanced stuff, and the lessons that I can learn on that relatively Pacific uh, uh, planet are limited now. I, there's really not much more I can learn there. And my guides are saying, well, you can either do a long route to where you want to get to by coming on less challenging worlds, or you can fast track it by going to a school of hard knocks such as the Earth, where you will be cut off, you'll feel denser than you know, there will be experiences such as hatred, confusion, and all these sorts of things gives him, shows him what that's like. And we said, we recommend that, but we don't tell you to do it. There is another route. Right? Obviously, he chose that. I'm told, then, that this incarnation he was in this time was only his third lifetime in this, in this body. And then he got angry. He started to yell at me. You guys are crazy down here. You, 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 you go to war in the name of something and fight somebody that says the opposite. You kill not the people that say it, but the people that are told to defend what the other person said, or ideal, and you celebrate with your wife and children the love, and then pick up a gun and shoot somebody else's father, knowing that that person is now gonna have no, uh, that family's not gonna have a father to, 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 to fend for them, to protect them, and you celebrate that. You guys are nuts. You're cruel, you're really cruel down here. He really got angry. And uh, I said, well, I can't argue with that. He's right. I said, and yet you came here. So why have you come to me, therefore? What's the lesson here? And he went into a huddle with his guide and he said, okay. If I don't get it right this time, then my guide is going to recommend I cho choose the other path. And this is a very specific life. There's many things that I can offer this planet during this transitional time. I needed to be awakened, and now that I've done this session with you, this is going to happen. I've got the opportunity. I see a transitioning happening within me in the next five years. I said, wonderful. So are you therefore more at peace with the insanity of this planet? I said, I'll eat it in small chunks. But I can do it. Yes, I can do it. Good. Now let's talk about the diarrhea. And he said, don't worry about it. Why? He said, the diarrhea was triggered into my DNA so that if I became highly emotional, as I have been recently, that it would force me to seek somebody like you to get me in contact with my guides, to answer and know all these things. Now that that's established, I know who I am, and I've just got to bite it and get on with it. So the diarrhea, he said, I'm being told that over the next couple of months the diarrhea will lessen. And if I go back to being highly emotional, it'll come back as a lesson. Well done. So I, I, I give that example as one where uh, another classroom on another planet, far less challenging than this, and then he was told, you've got a couple of options. You can take an easier route or the hard route. Guess what? You and I are all idiots enough to come to the school of hard knocks. But I'm told 
that on the other hand, when we go and gone through this transitional period, uh, there's not really an ego as such in the spirit world, but there is a sense of accomplishments and sense of, of having uh, a bit of respect, if you like, that we're going to have the merit badge that was on the earth when the change happened. We, you know, I went to the earth for the, how did you say it? The, went to the earth for the, for, the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the great change and all I got was this, this friggin', friggin' T-shirt, you know? <laughs> or something. But whilst that's humorous, there's a lot in it. Um, so if you're feeling that there's anything in the resonance of what we're talking about tonight and it's possibly something in you, then work with your guides. You can come and see me, but work with your guides. Pray to your guides and ask them and tell them that you're ready to the, for the next stage. Right? Ask questions before you go to sleep. Have a notepad, have a dictaphone. Um, and, and know that if you say to them, I'm ready for this, take me through this process as, at the best speed for me. Don't try and force it. Because if you force it, they will obey your request. But then, you know, so you know what's best for me. I give you permission to maximise that learning now or whatever it might be. I wish to be of service or I don't want to. I want off this planet, whatever it is. Okay. So, um, any, did anyone read that letter, uh, that, that, that uh, case history? Uh, any questions of, of, of the future Earth that's in that? No? Good. Any questions about progression or the earth changes that uh, I sometimes don't answer certain, unless I'm specifically asked? Are there any questions or wonderings about the earth changes? Yes? Um, is it the idea of simultaneous incarnations where we're incarnating uh, all at once and the idea of probable multiple outcomes of different timelines? And uh, uh, so, so progression, regression, in some ways, it seems a bit of uh, it's just all one big plane field. It's all happening simultaneously. Yes, of course, absolutely. And once this transition has happened, that will be far clearer. Yeah. We we will be we. What's going to happen? Um, I use a term that that may offend some people, but it's 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 uh, it's their ego that's offended. I believe anyway. I believe that we're going to be moving into a state of what I call Christ consciousness, and that is being able to be simultaneously aware on multiple dimensions at the same time, and be able to understand what is for the greater good, without having to contemplate it, and aware of the multiplicity of potentials in front of me. And know that uh, this brain limited me to seeing monodimensionally. But once this, the, the neural networks are, are quickened and new pathways are reactivated, we're going to be able to be conscious on multiple levels simultaneously. I'm not saying overnight. This is a, this is a progressive thing. It'll take a few incarnations. <laughs> be good, wouldn't it? Yes. Yeah, because we're still working with egos. We're still working with vested interests. But that's going to overnight change. So, you know, that's why I say to all these people that are working so diligently, such as yours, to try and protect the earth and do good things and try to uh, stop the slavery. But I, I, I'm saying, from my, that, that's your area of expertise. My area of expertise is that I'm being told, don't worry about it because it won't be there. Overnight, or in a relatively short period of time, all those that are now greedy will see the foibles of how they've offended the natural balance of life. And they will be sorry. Now, that's not to blame, because we will be naturally forgiving. I've done lots of stupid things over my lifetime, so there's something, a couple of my lifetimes, I'm not showing anyone. Because I was an ignorant, arrogant, and nasty person. But I also learned a lot from that. And it's made me a better person. And the people that are down, you know, shoving up, uh, up us right now, they are still our brothers and sisters at a soul level. Okay? And they will awaken to that. Uh, and if they don't, then they'll move on to another dimension, another planet. 
The destiny of this planet is sacrosanct. I, I give you, there is so many old souls overseeing this transitional time that it's guaranteed. How easy it is, is still largely up to us. That's why meetings like this are helpful. Even if you don't understand or believe anything of what I've said, but the fact that you're even listening and said, that's, maybe that's possible. And if it is possible, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Then we've opened up some neural pathways to, God, let's hope this is true. Right? Um, and if that's, then slowly we're sending out these ripples. The light workers are sending out ripples. I saw, I had a wonderful dream one night where I saw that all of us light workers that chose to come to the earth during the time of transition to be of service in some way, that as we start to question, as we start to see the cabals working to enslave us, and as we start to pull away from that game, and as we start to say, instead of being angry about it, rise above it, right? And as we start to rise above, certain other neural networks start to open up higher frequencies start to be available, such as in that auric work. And what happens then, I saw that as we choose to stop playing that game and choose a higher motivated game, then as we become more practiced at that higher thing, higher frequencies will be coming to and from us. And I saw like a matrix of light beings turning on around the earth. Just like when you, when you see those beautiful photographs of the earth at night and you see all the lights over the cities and you, see all the, and you can see where the roads are and you can see the little towns, there's only three or four dots. And, and, and I saw that as we are challenging ourselves, as we are challenging the system, as we ask the questions, but peacefully changing ourselves, we can't change anyone else. All we can do is change ourselves. As I become aware that it doesn't matter what they do to me, to this I am free if I choose to be free. I am enslaved if I choose to be enslaved. Right? That doesn't mean you shouldn't, you know, uh, accept meters and things like that. But within reason, don't have to get angry about it. Just accept that this is something at the moment. But this too will change. As we turn on and become peaceful, but ensconced in our I amness, then the light gets brighter and brighter in our soul. And I saw that bit by bit we create a network of brotherhood, sisterhood. And that collectively, as Ian was saying before about the fun, the collection, that's when we start to create that critical mass where all of a sudden that energy, enough of us are aware and awaiting and praying for that time to come and accepting when it comes that there will be so many of us turning to that higher frequency relatively quickly that it'll be like snapping on a computer. You hear all the networks going on. Does that make any sense? So, you know, by all means, uh, I, I resist the, the, the meters too. But ultimately, I, I sit back and go back and say, well, I'd prefer that weren't there, but I'm really not going to take this fight that far personally. I've got other jobs to do, like this. I can only have so many fights. And I don't want to be a fighting. I don't want to be fighting. I want to be spreading love. And, and work with other people like us that say, well, we can, we can go and live alternative lives. We can go to and join an, uh, an off-the-grid place if we want, or we can stay within the network and just stay as illuminated and try to tap as many people on the shoulder without preaching, without trying to be elitist in any way. Have you read this book? You know, uh, it might be helpful to you. If they accept it, fine. If they don't, well, fine too. You know, we, all we can do is work with ourselves. And then if I find that you and I have similar things, be good to talk about it over a cup of coffee and, and share, and that's how we bond. That's how we make creating this network. So, anything else I needed to say? Yeah, that's what we're talking about, yes. Now, um, it's now uh, 20 to 10. I've got two audios to play. I realise that some people have had a gutful. Oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, time, space, continue. I don't really live in it. Um, okay, so I realise it's time to pack up. I've got a couple of audios that will go on for about another 40 minutes. They're fascinating, but I realise that uh, you've...
probably had enough. If anybody wants to stay and listen to one or two of them, by all means stay. If there are any questions about this, ask me now. Uh, otherwise, goodbye and thank you. Oh, it's happening very often. Well, more often now. Uh, the Institute, the Newton Institute, we did a survey recently, uh, a year ago, of all, there's about 250 of us in the Institute collating uh, this life between life information. And we, to our surprise, we found out that uh, about 15% of the people, of the clients attracted to life between life sessions were hybrids. Hybrids, uh, non earthians, not essentially earthian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we have, uh, we have. I can tell you that there we have uh, consciousness group. Group. Let me see if I can. Say, I can actually see one. There's a, and they're sending us a blessing right now. There's a. There's group consciousnesses of great intelligence, vast intelligence, um, that are working at a peripheral area around the Earth, and. Um, they will send one or two of their members to incarnate, to be here. So I get some of them. And when I tap into them, uh, it's just like, you know, opening the door and getting a, a rush. Um, some of my clients, I need to do a lot of sharing, teaching, but there's some others, you open the door and the next thing you're just sitting there and you know, it's just coming and the earth is going this and that and the other and the other. I, I've been told by one master, <laughs> I love this guy, uh, thank you. Um, his client, my client, his ward, uh, needed to come to do some sessions because she, he was a little annoyed with her because she's actually got the credentials to be a master, but she wanted to be on the earth this time. And like a lot of these older souls, they take some pretty harsh experiences to teach younger souls some things. And now he was telling her that period of your life is over. You're now going to get into the serious work. And uh, that um, uh, he, I, he took her into the meeting the elders, which is in those two books, uh, Journey of Souls and Destiny of Souls. And uh, it was unusual because she had uh, seven masters, not nine masters. Very unusual. I don't think it was the first time I've ever heard nine masters for one soul. And I realized straight away, this is exceptional. There's something extraordinary happening here. So I said, uh, did you say nine? Yes. I just count them and you know all these masters? Yes, yes. And she was obviously chatty with them. Now, most younger souls, when they get into the presence of the masters, sort of sit there like they would with a, with a, with a, with a school headmaster. They stay quiet until they're spoken to. But the older souls get quite, you know, how you going? <laughs> sort of thing, and I said, uh, "Wow, nine is that means to does that mean there's something special?" And he says, "Yes, it is something special." So what's going on? He said, "My no, I can't use the name." Um, was sitting in front and um, was smiling at her and says, "It's time." And, uh, and I said, and I said, I got a zip to ask, is he wearing a medallion? Yes, he's wearing a medallion. Describe the medallion to me. She said, it's a beautiful, great amethyst and meshed with uh, running animals and various, which she described in reasonable detail. And she realized that each and every one of them entailed certain evolutionary points in her soul. And it had come to the, the amethyst. What does the amethyst represent to you? She says, if I want it, he's offering it to me. And he's saying, I really would like you to take this now. And, and she said, I think I'd better take it. What? Well, if I accept this, I take on the full responsibility of a master. Right? And, uh, and eventually she took it. I got to speak to him later on. He was very happy. That And I said, why are you so happy? Well, of course, it's time now because there's a lot of work going and I can now move to higher areas to facilitate this earth change. There's, this, there's, some, there's some nasty energies working against us, but we're, we're going to win. 
but we have to work. And, and now that she can take on some roles and responsibilities, I can now move up. And I said, but first I'm going to have some rest and recreation. He said, I deserve it. So I'm talking to this master. And, um, and I said, well, what the heck is rest and recreation for a master? And he said, well, I go into these beautiful spaces and places that are peaceful beyond your conception. And for a mind as complex as we become, this is a place where we can also just become like a limpid lake again. And it's very, very peaceful for us because we're aware of everything, but at the same time we're turning off. Like, like meditation, obviously, some sort of thing like that. And he said, but I've also been given something to read. Well, okay. Uh, like the Akashic Records. And he said, yeah, it's the Akashic Records of the Earth. And he said, it's that, okay, that big. And I said, uh, have you started to read it? He said, I've just started to read it. And I said, I've been told by some of my hypnotized older clients that there have been up to 25 or 26 different civilizations on the earth. And I've done some of those civilizations in some of these sessions. The earth has been many things. And he said, yes, more. And I said, why? Well, more and more. He says, yeah, well, because there were civilizations before we started recording them. They had civilizations coming and going on the earth before they started recording them. I'm thinking about Aboriginals. They've got civilization, they've got great wisdom, but they didn't learn how to write. You know? And um, he started to, 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 to share this information and he said that, however, again, we get back to the changes that are happening on the earth now are different. Nothing's ever been done like this before. And hence why there's so many old souls around at the moment. So I hope that s says something to you. If it doesn't, fine. I don't, I'm not trying to convert. If it's something that's supposed to push a little thing for you, I hope it does. Um, I'm being told don't worry about the audio. So if there are any other questions, otherwise we might call it a night. No? All done? Okay, well, thank you for being of service. Uh, thank allowing me to be. Thank you.